Yeah, from 9 on, he's in the industrial area. Industrial area. Looks like he's on a pavement. Stand by. Just a quick note before the video starts. I'm going to put the interactions at the beginning of this video because it's getting a bit long. The video itself is of me talking about police tactics and how they abuse certain legislation towards photographers. So if you're interested in what I've got to say about all that, then watch the whole video. But for those of you who are just interested in a bit of um, interaction, I'll stick all that at the beginning. Yeah, code of ethics. They got like a code of ethics. Now, there's no, there's no specific written requirement for a police officer to verbally give their name or number to a member of the public if verbally requested to do so. There's, there's no requirement whatsoever. Oh, here we go. So he wants to come over and be nosy. Oh, man, can you ever be nosy? Interrupt what I'm doing. Hello, mate. Keep distance, please. 50 metres. Yeah, I am. I'm just asking you what you're doing. I'll give you three guesses. The first two don't count. Sorry, what do you mean? What's it look like I'm doing? Yeah, I know you feel. Yeah, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what you're doing. You're interrupting me. So no, I appreciate what I'm doing it. Is appreciate doing it. It's asking why I'm filming. Because I have a camera. Again, why are you filming? Again, because I have a camera. And that's what cameras do. Yes, I know that. I'm not stupid. But then, why are you standing or acting stupid? Don't get funny. Or, I'm just asking a reasonable question as Anna. to why you are filming people coming in and out of a police station, of a custody suite, where you've got all types of different people. That is what I am asking. Right, OK. I don't answer questions. There you go. Now, if you could kindly leave me alone so I can get on with what I'm doing, no, I'd appreciate like it. Then you stand there, I'll wait till you go, and then I can carry on doing what I'm doing. Okay, I'll stand here. Alright, you stand there. We'll see who stands here the longest. Are you a police officer? No, I'm not. Who are you? Are you a, so you're not a police officer? Go on then, there's a police station right there. Funny old thing, that's where I've just come from. Go and get a police officer then, if you're not a police officer. Go and get one. No, I don't need to. I'm a member of the public and I'm asking you why you are filming. Right. That I, is a general question. I don't have to answer to you, there you go. Do I? Do I have to answer to you? Am I obliged to answer any question out you ask me? Out of politeness. Out of politeness, you would have left me alone. But what, what do you work as? Well, whatever it is, would you appreciate it if I walked up to you and stopped you what you was doing? This is a restricted site. No, this is public. This is public property. That is not a restricted site. It's a police station. It's a public police. It's not a police station, actually. All right, it's, it's a police, police investigation sign. centre, exactly. which is a police station, mate. No, it's not. Police All station right. is entirely different of a police station, of a custody suite, of a police station. Of a custody suite to a police custody suite. Right. So, th so there's. What? Yeah, go and get a police officer. They know I'm here. Do they now? Of course they do. They've been looking at me out the window for half an hour. Yeah. Off you go. It's always one, isn't it? Right. Adam? May I ask what you're doing to take the photograph? 
Taking photos? Of? Anything I like. Yeah, no, but this is an MOD site, I'm just saying. Doesn't matter. Said, it matters to me, I'm just asking. Oh, well, it doesn't matter to me, I'm just taking photos of whatever I like, mate. Alright, no, no need for that attitude. Well, I was just asking you a reason. I don't have to give a reason, though, do I? No, you don't have to give right. a reason. Right, well, I'm not giving a reason. I just need to calm myself down. Right. Did, did you see what I took a photo of? No. You didn't? Well, I know you're facing towards here. That's all I'm concerned Sorry. about. There you go. I don't, I don't want to see. I'm just, I, I I'm just don't believe what you're I'm saying. Just, you said you, you wanted for your benefit. Yeah, I can see so where you you're can, pointing to. So you can feel better. Yeah, so I'm I'm showing you what I took a photo of, right. which is just that little bunch of signs. Okay. Yeah, I'll take. I'm a street photographer, so I'll take photos of. I understand that, but sorts. as I say, this is an MOD site, so yeah. you can understand the alarm. Not the alarm, but the questions that would be asked. No, I don't. Well, I'm saying that's why we don't allow photography on site. I just wanted to know why you were taking pictures of the site from outside. Yeah, that's, that's your policy. I can understand your policy, right. but I'm not on your site. I'm off your site, so I can yeah, take so photos I understand of, that. of anything. I understand that. Okay, well, I'll just take you. That was just my query. All right. Okay. <laughs> what do you photograph, Superman? Anything. Anything. Take one of you, if you like. Can I take one of you? Straight photography. Oh, and sure anything that looks interesting. You you look interesting with bright bright a lot of smoke. Go on. Seriously, go on bright a lot of smoke, mate. Hang on. And another one. <laughs> cheers, cheers mate. Hey? It's a feral camera. It's good. Cheap. No. <laughs> cost more the lens costs more than the camera. Thanks, Hello people and sheeple. Kanaki news. I'm gonna have to talk in between traffic. Because it's quite busy around here. Not a lot I can do about that. But um anyway I said I'll come back to this area. Bring a better lens. I've got my better lens with me. I've got a better tripod with me. After I finish this report, I'm gonna I'm off to go and um, shoot some more street photography. I think I took about 250 odd pictures last time. I think out of that I probably kept about half a dozen, maybe, if I'm lucky. Better, better to take too many than not enough. But anyway, I'm going to talk about um, some tactics, police tactics, police abuse tactics, and what legislation they like to abuse when they're dealing with um, photographers. And to be honest, I, I started my channel because of this bloke, or this boy actually, I'll just grab, grab your name quickly. Uh, no, I'm obliged really to give you my name. You don't have to, I just want to mm. give you your name. Yeah, no, it's fine. Obviously, you sit here, standing here, doing stuff like this. Now, he wouldn't shut up asking for my details. So, it wound me up. So I decided to make another recording, see if I get the same reaction I did. Am I being detained? Sorry? Am I being detained? No, it's merely a stop Okay. Power. I mean, if you do uh, leave, obviously we do have powers. Are you going to use those powers if I leave then? Because you, you just said I'm not being detained, so I'm free to go. You're not being detained. So I'm no. free to go. Uh, and by all means, if you do leave, it does it does mean that we would be able to use powers to arrest you on the grounds of suspicion of an offence. What offence? My colleague is speaking to my sergeant at the moment. So, am I free to go? That's obviously your decision. And I'm not being detained? That's obviously your decision. And I'm free to leave. So, that's kind of what kicked me off with my news channel. Anyway, I reckon they're told in training 
when they finish their training, I reckon they're told to forget most of what they've learnt and to just copy them, them being police officers that uh, are going to take them under their wing. So, uh, yeah, that's what I reckon. But anyway, the, the go-to abuse, in my opinion, is Section 5 of the Public, uh, Public Order Act. Now, that's a favourite of the police, but the police, they like to leave out the most crucial part of that act and jump straight to the words, you're causing harassment, alarm or distress. Now, that act has crucial parts to it. Now, the offence itself is Section 5 of the Public Order Act, 1986. And the offence is created by Section 5. But you have to, a person must, a person is guilty of an offence if he or she a uses, this is the important bit, uses threatening or abusive words or behaviour or disorderly behaviour. Now that's, they skip all that out. Now disorderly behaviour can be a lot of things. But, you know, a person who in a public place or police station behaves in a disorderly or offensive manner or fights with another person, or uses offensive language, or disturbs the public peace, is guilty of that offence. So, in order to commit a Section 5 public order, you must have used threatening or abusive words or behaviour. They can't just turn around and say, oh, you're causing someone harassment, alarm or distress. Because someone's haircut could, have caused, could cause you harassment, alarm or distress. So, you know, you can't be arrested for that. So you can't be arrested if you don't use threatening or abusive words or behaviour. Or display in writing a, a sign or other visible representation which is threatening or abusive. So, that's the main one they like to abuse. So, for all the other photographers out there that like to record whatever they like from public, which they're allowed to do, I recommend you, you take a copy of these with you so you can quote them back at them or memorise them like a lot like I have with a lot of them I've memorised a lot you know, I'm, I'm not a solicitor but I read a lot so I try and memorise as much as I can so yeah the section 5 public order they really like to abuse that one so you know most most sheeple don't understand the law and don't want to learn about it either. All their rights, they prefer to leave that to a professional. The only problem with that is they don't carry a professional in their pocket. You know, to help correct unlawful behaviour of the police. So, you know, unless, unless you've got a, a, solicitor on, a solicitor on speed dial, you don't know the law you're screwed so you know it makes it easy for them to abuse their powers if you don't know them and if they realize that you don't know the law then they really screw you over but a perfect example was that female constable at Cosham <laughs> I'm going to stick that up on YouTube now. No, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame, you're in a public place, mate. Right, now. I might use that as my thumbnail. <laughs> Poser. Where was I? Yeah, perfect example was that, that blonde female at Cosham Police Station who tried using Section 5 on me for standing on the pavement. And a colleague agreed with her. You are starting to use alarm and distress to members of the public. They are taking a wide berth. Excuse me, on what? You're causing alarm and distress. Alarm and distress? To members of the public. So do you think that's a Section 5 public order? At this moment, <laughs> it potentially could be, yeah. At 
at this moment, it potentially could be, yeah. Can it? Do, what's the wording of that? Do you know? I do know, but I don't think it's going to be. No, I, I know it as well. You've missed out a little, you've missed out quite a bit of that act though, haven't you? You've missed out to, to use threatening and abusive words or behaviour. You missed that bit out. Didn't you? If your behaviour is making people move... My behaviour is not abusive. Now, the embarrassment on her face, once she realised that I knew the law, says it all, really. She was proper embarrassed because she knew, without the element of threatening words... Or abusive behaviour, she didn't have a leg to stand on. So unless I'm swearing in public, in earshot of other members of the public, they can't do nothing. But it didn't stop her from trying to pull that one out of the hat because they didn't want me standing outside the police station. So, you know, nothing they can do about it. And calling out some Larry Sergeant ain't going to change the law either. Now, if anyone comes out now, because I'm standing outside the police station, with a bloody great big camera, with a bloody great big lens, I mean, I don't know whether to stay silent. I'd, I'd like to, just to see what they do. But the problem I've got with that is I can't control my mouth. If someone's lying to me, as soon as I open their gob and start lying to me and, and bullshit start bullshitting legislation that doesn't exist, or they start twisting the law at me, that winds me up. And then as soon as I'm wound up, my gob kicks off. So, I can't help myself. I mean, at the end of the day, photography itself is not against the law, is it? So, I mean, at the end of the day, they made cameras way back in 1816. That's when they was invented. So, if they was going to be against the law, they would have banned them years ago, decades ago, centuries ago even. hope there's not too much wind noise. I've got a dead cat on my camera. I've got a wind jammer on me. Bob Love body camera which is running and that ain't going to get turned off anytime soon either. Now I'm going to be turning this camera around in a minute. And start pointing it somewhere else. See if they like that or not. We've well, got a few up in the window now. But anyway, it's, photography itself is not a crime. It's, it's what you take pictures of can be a crime. Obviously if you're taking pictures of, of children of a sexual nature then you know you're committing a crime and you should be bloody prosecuted or hostile reconnaissance again if you're collecting information so you can plan a terrorist attack or a crime or rob the place or something like that then you know that kind of photography if it's being used for that is a crime but if you're not doing that and there's no reasonable evidence of you doing that there's, then, there's, then there's no crime. Simple as that. Now the police can't just say that's what you're doing just because they see you with a camera. They can't just say, oh, you're, you're engaged in hostile reconnaissance because they don't know if you are or not. At the end of the day, the police, they go on what you... They have to go on what they do know and not what they don't know. So, right, so I'm going to read out like a couple of the main laws that they, um, they like to use.
out the window now and then there's a police car that's just arrived as well so they're all looking at me out the window anyway the first one is is the uh section 5 of the public order act as you know you need to use threatening or abusive words or behavior simple as that i got a whole i got a whole crew of them looking at me out the window look yeah they all moved as soon as i pointed the camera up there there's a nice little wave up there look that's it have a little wave Now, when they fail on that one, the next is going to legislation that they like to abuse. It's section 50 of the Police Reform Act. They like to abuse that one. Now, what they do with that one is they come down here or to whoever it is and they say, what you're doing is antisocial. Now, what I'm doing is not antisocial behaviour. They can't class public photography, mind of my own business, as antisocial behaviour. Yeah, they all bottled away from the window now when they see the camera moving. Yeah, so, so public photography is not antisocial behaviour. I like to use Section 50 of the Police Reform Act to get your name and address. Now, if you do decide to give your name and address, you do not have to give your date of birth under that legislation and antisocial behaviour is defined as, as doing something likely to cause harassment, alarm or distress but again, standing in the street, in public, minding your own business recording isn't causing people harassment, alarm or distress they can leave any time they want, they can close the windows, close the curtains Close the blinds, go and cuddle up in a corner and give themselves a hug. Now if you, if you refuse to give your name and address and, and police abuse and powers, Pap, he can, he can vouch for this, you might get arrested, like he did. But that's not always the case. And even though the police might threaten it, they might threaten the arrest for not providing details, But they don't always arrest you. So, you know, if you've got the bottle and if you've got the time, call their bluff. But even if you call their bluff anyway and they do arrest you, they still need reasonable evidence that you caused antisocial behaviour, otherwise, it's unlawful. Simple as that. In some cases, the police, the police are known to de-arrest you anyway, as soon as they get your name and address. So it's all about getting names and addresses. It's, it's all about getting them numbers and names and addresses. I mean, if you prosecute the police, they, they still got, they've got to provide evidence to the court that they reasonably believe that you was engaged in antisocial behaviour. So, standing on the public pavement, or on a grass verge, like I am, Minding my own business, talking to my camera, is not antisocial behaviour and it can't be used as it either. Now, I mean, you could be convicted, you could be fined. I'd personally, if, if I could, I'd take it all the way to Crown Court. I don't care how big the fine might end up. Um, but I'll, I'll say one thing though, given a false name and address, is an is an offence, so you know don't don't do that if they if they start threatening with it. But you know, it's, it's quite a lot of people. If they get if they get um, abused by the police officer for using Section 50, they take them to court and they claim compensation. So you know, if you if you know you haven't committed antisocial behaviour, then um, Stand your ground. Now, failing all that, the big one they like to use and abuse 
is a Terrorism Act 2000, section 43 to be precise, and sometimes the idiots will use section 44. And even, I don't know, they might pretend that I, I didn't know it wasn't, you know, it was repealed back in, oh, when, when to January 2010? 12th of January 2010, the European Court of Human Rights ruled that Section 44 of the Terrorism Act breaches privacy rights uh, afforded by Article 8 of the Convention of Human Rights. So, Section 44, I mean, at that, in the day, that gave them the power to just stop and search her. They didn't even need reasonable suspicion of anything. They could just stop and search her. And there was a big... There was a big old... Um, gathering outside Scotland Yard. There was a big old gathering outside Scotland Yard with photographers because they all kicked up a fuss because all the photographers in London were being stopped and searched constantly. So it went to court and they, they deemed it uh, against your human rights. And then eventually it got repealed. So section 44 does not exist. Now, if you're searched under section 44, then sue them. Simple as that, it's an open and shut case, sue them. Simple as that. You know, you, you can't lose if they abuse Section 44. It, they've, they've, they violated your human rights. Simple as that. But anyway, with Section 43, they have to have reasonable suspicion that you are a terrorist. Now, me standing here, reading a news report that I've drafted that doesn't make you a terrorist. Now, they've all seen me, they're all looking at me out their window, they keep looking round, and they're leaving me alone. And I'll tell you why they leave me alone, because I've got a bloody great big camera. Now, if I'm standing here, with my phone, doing the same thing, I would have been accosted by now. So that's one advantage of, of having this expensive equipment, is they do tend to leave you alone a bit more often. Because they know that I know I'm allowed to do what I'm doing. But you never know. The police are... They, they, the police, they're full of idiots. They are a hell of a lot of idiots. As I call it, an investigation centre these days. They like to change their names, don't they, of things? Make them sound more intelligent. But it's a police station. It's a bit like ambulance drivers, they, they change their name to, to technicians. But no, they're, they're drivers, a lot of them. You know, they know like first aid and stuff. But anyway, section 43 of the Terrorism Act. Now, a constable can stop a person whom they reasonably suspect to be a terrorist to discover whether he has in his possession which anything which may constitute evidence that he's a terrorist. Now, the, the only thing they're going to get in most people's bags, because a terrorist wouldn't stand here doing what I'm doing, is a camera lens, or a cleaning cloth, or something like that. But anyway, they, but they need reasonable suspicion, and just walking up to someone and saying, what are you doing? And if you, you don't answer them, that mean nothing. That doesn't turn you into a terrorist. That doesn't give them reasonable suspicion. Yeah, whatever, mate. I guess I'm pointing right at you. But they're wondering what they can do about it. But anyway, the constable may search a person arrested under section 41. That's if you've been arrested because they think you're a terrorist. Then they can search you, obviously, because you've been arrested. No matter what you're arrested for, they're gonna search you, so. 
But Section 43 is is being searched, not not arrested. They need reasonable suspicion. Simple as that. Now here's one that they try and use sometimes. I think they tried to use this recently by someone else. I, I, I stuck his video up on my channel a little while ago. Now they tried to use a, a Section 35 dispersal order. Or rather, they threatened to go and get one. They threatened to go and get a dispersal order. And she waddled off and came back with nothing. Now, the reason she came back with nothing is because they can't just write a dispersal order. They can't just pull one out their ass and go, there you go, bugger off. Don't work like that. Part three of the Antisocial Behaviour Crime and Policing Act 2014 provides the police with powers to dispense individuals in order to remove or reduce the likelihood of members of the public becoming harassed, alarmed or distressed or the occurrence of crime or disorder in a particular area. Now, the important bit about this is a police officer, again, of the rank of inspector or above, must authorise in writing the use of dispersal powers under section 34 of the Act in a specific location and during a specific period. Now, this is normally at the weekends in the town centre to make the piss head go home. That's what they do with that one. They can't just pull one out their arse and say, right, off you go, I'm ordering you to disperse the area. Doesn't work like that. So the likelihood of there being a Section 35 dispersal notice or order, where I'm standing right now, is zilch, zero, nada, nothing. So, if anyone wants to come out and say, right, I'm going to write you a th section 35 dispersal order, just ignore them, because it don't exist. And section 35 itself, sets out how an officer with reasonable grounds as well, again, that, that, the use of that is reasonable grounds, Yeah, you look all you like, mate. Can direct a person to leave and not return for up to 48 hours. But they've got to have reasonable grounds. So they can't just walk up to someone because they don't like them standing there and tell them to go away. There needs to be a dispersal order in place and they need reasonable grounds. So you must have to have done something in order to warrant it. So all these, all these documents um, are available to download off of most of my videos. Now, here's another one they, they, they like to use. Seizure powers. They like to, oh, I'm going to seize your phone if you don't stop recording me. Now, a lot of the time, they say, I'm seizing your phone as evidence. As evidence of what? As evidence of you recording the police acting unlawfully. Yeah, don't give up your phone. But they do it to piss you off. They do it to inconvenience you. And they do it because it's, it's a bloody pain in the arse and a lot of paperwork and a lot of going to magistrates' courts to get them to give it back. So, you know, if you can afford it, get, your, get yourself a second-hand smartphone and use that and leave your personal phone at home. Go and get yourself a, a smarty SIM card. It costs, like, £5. Stick a smarty SIM card in it. That'll last you a month. And when it runs out, just let it run out. Next time you want to go out and use that phone again, just stick another five quid on it. But at the end of the day, if they, if they take the phone off me that I've got on me, there's nothing on it. It's empty. It's, it's, it's got solicitors on it. It's got a taxi on it. It's, it's, yeah, there's nothing on it. It's, it's not worth nothing. It's, it's a throwaway phone. But, you know, so, so if you want to go out and you want to record, and you don't want to lose any camera equipment, take a throwaway phone. They do, they do like to threaten that one. They do like to threaten seizure of your phone as evidence.
that um, it has to be evidence of a crime that either you've committed, and if anything, the only crime that's being committed is them threatening to seize your phone. Now, also, and uh, uh, this is against the law for them. This this comes under the, the Criminal Justice and Courts Act 2015, section 26, subsection 5 to 7A. And that is the, either the improper use of police powers or the threatening to use improperly police powers. So uh, these were brought in in 2015 to protect people like us from criminals like them. So, yeah, don't give up your phone. And if, if you're going to go out recording in public in certain circumstances, then uh, try and get yourself a cheap second-hand throwaway phone that you don't mind losing rather than your, your nice expensive iPhone 11 or whatever it is up to or your, your, your Samsung Galaxy S10 or 20 or whatever. Leave all those ones at home with all your, your family photos on and your personal information and everything else. Something else they, they tend to forget is now the police, they, they all take an oath and uh, yeah, it's like, it's like an, in England and Wales, or Northern Ireland, it's described as a, a, an attestation. And, um, you know, in, in that oath, now I'm, I'm going to read it out. Now, I, I, PC, dumb, thickhead, of whatever police station, of whatever gang station, do solemnly and sincerely declare and affirm that I will well and truly serve the Queen in the office of constable. So when you turn around and say you work for me, a lot of you people, no they don't. They work for the Queen. Now it's with fairness, integrity, diligence and impartiality. Now this is the important bit for us. Upholding fundamental human rights. Now I have the human right to stand here doing what I'm doing and I do believe it's covered under Article 10 of the European Convention of Human Rights and Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So it's protected what I'm doing and they take an oath They take an oath to uphold my human rights. So, and that's a part, that's, that's a part of the oath that they take. Uh, and ac according equal respect to all people, and that I will, to the best of my power, cause the peace to be kept and preserved and prevent all offences against people and property. And that while I continue to hold the said office, I will to the best of my skill and knowledge, dis discharge all the duties thereof faithfully according to law. I think what I'm going to do is, is there's going to be lots of little tiny little cuts. So I might cut out the gaps in between where I'm waiting for traffic to um, bugger off. So uh, anyway, so that's their oath. Oath of office. The problem with all this noise is, is they built this station on a bloody industrial estate. So just, I swear they've done it on purpose to make it awkward for um, people to get here. Yeah, go on. That's what I reckon. Let's build it out the way and make it awkward for people to get here. Yeah, that's their oath of office to uphold our human rights. Simple as that. Yeah, you look as much as you want, mate. Getting their details. Now, 
they got like a code of conduct and a uh, off you go it's always one isn't it right where was I oh yeah it's easy wound me up now I should have just kept quiet like I said I was going to in the first place I can't help myself Oh look, there's a man up there. He's taking pictures. <laughs> anyway, code of ethics. That's what I was talking about. Now there's no specific written requirement for police officers to verbally give their name and or number. to remember the public if they are to so, I, I watch a few people and they say oh boy law you have to you have to give it to me three forms of ID blah 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 I'm not quite sure that that's actually true but in their code of ethics it says something a little bit different but according to their code of ethics and it and again code of ethics is that's not law so you know there's no law saying that they have to give you their their name and number but they have to identify themselves and the only thing they need to identify themselves is a number so now I've got for my camera people up there watching me now because of that stupid idiot so let's see ah look let's get you up there because of that stupid idiot yeah move away from the window all of you and then the idiots up there up there for my camera up there because of that stupid idiot over there thinks that I can't stand here and do what I'm doing outside the police station or police investigation station or whatever the hell they want to call it so I can point my camera anywhere I want and if they don't like it tough shit yeah, he's off he goes now, look, off he trots. There you go. Where are you? There you go. Let's get his number plate. Not that really matters, because I can't do nothing with that anyway. But that's him. Mr. Squeal. That's what he wants to do. Mr. The Squeal. There's a man out there with a bloody big camera and he won't tell me what he's doing. Yeah, leave mate, leave. There's like hundred police in there, go and get one. I bet you have to go this way, but he's going that way anyway. He's gone right, right, right at the end there. You're going to Put that camera down, or we will tase you. No, 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 no.